I don't want to drive myself to my death. Park in that spot, I always do a little beyond the yellow line so I don't have to parallel park. I don't want to be buried in the courtyard where I eat lunch when it's warm and the sunlight peeks over the side of the building. I want that light on my face shining into my eyes, burning my skin instead of illuminating the granite of my headstone. I don't want to walk into my death of my own free will, always a game of chance, a multiple choice question I don't understand, so I close my eyes and circle C, jumping at every shout because it might be someone screaming out in pain. The electric pencil sharpener sounds like the rapid fire of a machine gun. I don't want to be stuffed into that overfilled trash can in the senior hallway. Styrofoam and McDonald's cups and my flesh torn by bullet holes, screaming as they dump me out into a landfill, clawing at the dirt as it fills my lungs, as the media forgets my name, as my friends stop thinking about me when they hear a certain song. I don't want my soul to stay in the new chairs in the Performing Arts Center, oozing in the crevices between the seats, my red blood on blue chairs the theater, used to be my haven. But now when I stand on that stage, all I think about, if a shot rang out, which way would I run? What final text message would I send to my parents? Still they tell me I'm too young to speak up, to raise my voice. But I'm also too young to decide what kind of flowers I want at my funeral, or to write a will, an unofficial piece of notebook paper with the fringe still attached, giving my college fund to my sister and my clothes to my best friend, asking the adults in my life to honor my final wishes, telling them to advocate for mental health awareness, to befriend those who are different, and for God's sake, don't give my English teacher a handgun when he can't even work the projector correctly. But they won't listen because I ask for too much. My safety is too much. I don't want the fall of the United States government or an abolition of the Second Amendment. I want to feel safe. My safety, not the institution of an anarchy, all for the sake of frightened children. But I am a frightened child, and I refuse to be afraid anymore. Determined footsteps, thousands strong, become a movement. I will march for my life. This is my reality now metal detectors and political inaction, but it won't be like this forever so long as we keep fighting someday. My sister, my children will know the privilege of walking into their school and they will know without even thinking about it that they will walk out.